Welcome to Transformation with Martinet. Conquer everything and compromise nothing. This show brings you real, raw, and vulnerable conversations. If you have never liked small talk and have been on a personal growth journey for a long time, stay tuned as Martinet and her guests share empowering stories. Now is the time to own your past and look toward your future with hope. Believe in your dreams and all that you want to achieve is possible. Transformation coach Martinet helps you accept and love you for you. It's time to listen to your heart and tap into your unlimited potential. You have the answers you need inside. Sometimes you just need the right guide to help allow transformation to happen. Transformation with Martinet starts now. Welcome, welcome everyone to Transformation with Martinet. This is where we conquer everything and compromise nothing. For those of you that might be unfamiliar with my show, it is every Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And I am all about hope and the resilience of the human spirit. So the guests that I invite here are like me. They want to share hope. They want to share their story of overcoming and to give you hope that no matter what you're going through, you can get through it. We are proof of that. Without further ado, I want to welcome my guest today, Andy Vargo, and we just got to be friends through a book adventure that is coming out on June 14th. The Billies be looking for it. Um, we'll have more on the next next show about it, but um, so excited. The first book was amazing. This one is going to be even better, and um, uh, I know both of us are privileged to be a part of it. Welcome, Andy. Well, thank you so much, Martin. It's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you being here. So um, when when did you start? I know you've got quite the story, but when did you start in this fabulous world of transformation and breakthroughs and well, living your awkward self-life? <laughs> that's a great question because really the, the, the pivoting point was about seven years ago mm -hmm. when I decided I couldn't just, you know, Get through life the way I was getting through it and I uh -huh. came out of the closet got mm -hmm. divorced ended mm -hmm. up changing my careers it, it but when you you know I haven't had somebody ask when was the beginning of the story because that feels like when we we get to the point where we know we need to make the change but mm -hmm. there's this slow buildup of I yep. can't I can't be like this anymore yep. uh, but yeah really seven years ago I started making a bunch of life changes and a year after that I really dived into getting into speaking and coaching and pursuing my passion to be an author and help people really find their true authentic selves because I found how important that was to change everything in your life for myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so is it okay to ask like, what was going on inside of you when you're like, yeah, you know, cause I really relate um, when I got divorced from my ex-husband, the father of my children, I finally, it like, it, <laughs> It just hit me one day that it's like, it's it's never going to change. Things are never going to change. If I want to make it, many changes are going to happen. I can beg, plead, cry. It didn't matter what I was going to do. Nothing was going to change. I had to make the change. And it had to be a little bit more of a drastic one than I wanted. But what was going on for you? Yeah. You like, I, okay, it's time. I, I appreciate that question because it was definitely similar. I can relate to you saying it just hit you all of a sudden of yeah. if things don't change. Uh, one thing that I've learned is with myself and with so many people that I that I work with, we we make all these changes to try to make our lives better, to try to ease the pain of whatever we're going through. Yeah. But I think that usually we don't make big enough changes. We, you know, it's like we shift the pillow around and we get different uh, comforter on our bed because we we think, okay, maybe that'll make me more comfortable, but we don't replace the mattress or we don't move out of the house entirely. Mm -hmm. So we still have that bad back, whatever the thing is, but yeah, we're afraid to make that big change. And I, I tell you, I remember the exact moment that that hit because I was, mm -hmm. I was in the dining room of the house that I was in with my wife and three kids. Mm -hmm. And it was in the Northwest. I live in Washington, Western Washington. It was a November day, two weeks before my 40th birthday, mm -hmm. cold, rainy, even colder inside than it should be because of the way I was feeling. And my ex-wife said to me, you know, I don't even know what to do for your birthday. You're going to tell me exactly what you want, or I'm just going to make dinner here. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, my instant thought was, I want to be with someone that I've been with who 
knows me after 20 years that they would know what to that I would appreciate and want like this is not Mm -hmm. the relationship I want to be in and it was as much of a situation of not being with the right person not Mm -hmm. not being treated the best in a relationship and not bringing the best of myself to the relationship either so I didn't you know it's it's twofold and when I I had in that moment I was like everything's going to change in the next year I just know that I can't I can't be in a job that I'm not fulfilled in, that I'm not performing at my best. I can't mm-hmm. be in a relationship that I'm not bringing my best or getting what I need out of it right. uh, for my soul. Mm-hmm. And it was in that moment that I thought everything's going to change. And I didn't know how or what the change was going to be. I just knew that if if things didn't, if I didn't take control and make changes in my life, I could live like this the rest of my life and just be miserable. Yeah. You know, there was somebody who said, um, just to can't, you know, I'm just keep it confidential here. Um, I mean, this is, I mean, confidential from my family and all that, but there was somebody who said in my life that I never would have survived my marriage had it not been for low self-esteem. Wow. I remember hearing that from somebody and then it marinated a bit, you know, and, and it's kind of interesting. You were talking about 40 years old, because when I turned 39, it was like, oh my God, this is awful. It was worse than 40 because Mm -hmm. I knew that it's going to be me. That's going to have to step forward. Had it been in most of my marriage was I had to be the one to take action. Right. And I was, I was so depressed about turning 40 and it wasn't about, Mm -hmm. I'm going to be this old 40 year old guy. Like it wasn't tied to the age. It was yeah. feeling of this is not what I pictured for my life at this point in mm-hmm. time. I expected to be in a different place mentally yeah. and being fulfilled. And that's not where I was. And so I thought, well, if, mm-hmm. if I couldn't get there by now. If I keep doing the same thing, I'll never get there. Yeah. Isn't it that, that old saying or whatever you keep doing what you're doing? Right. Yeah. You're not getting anywhere. And that's like the definition of crazy or something, right? Mm-hmm. You know? And you yeah. can hear it over and over again from multiple different sources mm-hmm. with different wording. But until you hear it at the right time or you, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes you we create sayings in our head like like we think we figured it out, even though people have told us 20 times, but until we're ready to hear it, it has no impact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if your case is the same as mine. My ex-husband's a good guy. He really is. It's just wasn't working. Like we were not following like the same path. It, things were not going to work. Right. You know, yeah, I, I and, know. For, yeah. For us, we, we, I, I look at it like, um, you know, Clorox and ammonia that you can have bleach mm-hmm. and ammonia that yeah. both have excellent cleaning powers together. But when we were together, we just brought out the worst in each other. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, those two things as for people who don't know, you put those together and it's explosive and it's dangerous, yeah. but yeah. individually they can have their own powers. Sure. Yeah. It's like, we're good people, but just not so good together. You yeah. Know? And exactly. yeah. And somebody who was, especially at that point, really getting into self-development, I didn't have a coach at that point, but I'd had a therapist. We had um, couples therapy, we had all that. And I was always delving in to improve myself. So it was just a knowing like, yeah, okay, Um, I need to make those changes. So when you, like you said, it took you about a year or more, same with me. Um, When, what was that day when enough is enough? Okay, I'm, I'm going. Um, You know, ironically, like with, with my divorce, um, we had not been in a good place for, for years Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that had been looming and there got to a point where we were having a very rational conversation. And this was that, that birthday was in November and four months later, you know, we get to three, three months later, I guess we get to Valentine's day and we have Mm -hmm. this very cold shoulder Valentine's day. We go for a walk, but we're just not having it. And on the, on the ride home, it was a very rational conversation about, well, how could we get divorced and make this financially work? And it was no emotion, not a fight, just, Okay, it's yeah. time it's happened. A month later, we had a really good weekend, and I could just see this look in my ex-wife's eyes that was just, oh, maybe things are gonna happen. And I just had to say, you know, I and I had gotten to a point where I, I needed to be out and I was ready to be out. I yeah. mean, marriage and everything, just not just even being out. Like I wasn't even trying to be 
to go live my gay life necessarily. Mm -hmm. Just I knew this wasn't wasn't the right space. Yeah. And I just I just started crying because I'm looking at my ex-wife like, oh my gosh, she thinks this is going to work. And I, after our last month, thought it's finally over. Right. And, and she's like, what is wrong? It's like, I was like, I just got to say, if, if we're going to try to make this work, you need to know that there's this other piece of me that I've had these feelings that um, if we're going to try to make it work, you need to know that's at play. And looking back, I didn't have the courage to say, this is a bad relationship. I'm not treated well. And I'm not bringing my best self to this. And that's why I need to leave. Mm -hmm. I, uh, that would have been a much healthier exit strategy that didn't put it all on my own issues to take uh -huh. the book or why we're splitting up, even though there were years of reasons to. Mm -hmm. So um, so that created a lot of unfolding. And for me, you know, I used that as my, hey, this is why we're breaking up. And it took me, I was going to therapy at the time, mm -hmm. but it still took me another you know, a couple of years to really come to terms with the damage mentally I needed to to overcome in my head of being in that relationship that wasn't the best and of, yeah. you know, how I'd been living. So it was layers of, you know, you, you heal one wound and then you realize, oh, there's this other sore I hadn't noticed and it wasn't as big. Mm. But now that's the biggest wound I need to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're saying like it, to me, anyway, I think um, as a woman, I would have wanted to know what was wrong mm -hmm. to kind of help myself with the next relationship or whatever. And I think hearing what you said would have been harder for me. Do you think it was for her? Yeah, I, I've read a lot and learned a lot about, you know, when, when one partner comes out, there's also a coming out for the other person mm -hmm. because there is that am I attractive to anybody? Am I, why am I bringing the wrong person into my life? And whether that's because they're gay or anything different, when we aren't with the right person, we question, can we ever find the right person going forward? So mm -hmm. it is important mm -hmm. to know why things don't work, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also hard to not make that the only, uh, the only issue in, in a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Did you always know when you got married and you didn't want to? to ignore yeah. It, you or? know, you know, you know, 30 years ago when I was courting my ex-wife and getting started in life or it, um, it just wasn't, you know, it wasn't the path of life I wanted to go down. I, I just thought, mm -hmm. oh, this all, this is just a little thing that's out there, but it's not who I am. So it's, it'll go yeah. away. It'll get easier with time, right? Like I, I have feelings for this woman. And so mm -hmm. it didn't seem like it had to be that way, but right, you, know, right. realize that you can't, you got to trust your gut. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Sometimes um, just younger years, we're just, we're not able to. There, there was a situation with my father the other day that he's just like, well, you used to believe like this. And I'm like, well, God, I wasn't even 20 then. Right. I don't think anything like that now. And I didn't know um, what intuition was back then. What the what? I didn't understand what intuition was at that point. Mm -hmm. in my life. Right, right. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment when we get back. Um, Intuition is a good one, you know, being able to tune in, trust, and well, trust ourselves that it's all going to be okay, even if I make this decision, because if it doesn't work out, I can pivot and do something else. Right. You know? Yeah. But it's hard to trust that when you're young. It is. Yeah. So we're going to take a break, everyone, and um, we'll be back. Welcome back, everyone, to Transformation with Martinet, where we conquer everything and compromise absolutely nothing. My guest today is Andy Vargo, and we've been talking about relationships and how sometimes it, it may take us a while to make that decision or the last bit of whatever you want to say, effort or whatever, to actually step out. But intuitively, we know it's something we need to do. And over break, I was just thinking about... Um, there was an incident with me where I remember going out for my walk. I'm a, I'm a daily walker, jogger, whatever. And I have been since gosh, my twenties. So I remember going out for my walk one morning and it was cold outside. Um, I don't know if there was snow or not, but I was going for a walk and I ended up over at uh, one of my girlfriend's house. And I just sent her a quick test message. Can I see you like real quick? And she's like, yeah, I'm just getting out of the shower. Give me a minute. Okay. 
And she comes outside and um, she goes, you know, and I said, you know what? I am truly alone. And I just fell apart. It was just like, and I'm not somebody who cries easily. It's just, oh. I just not. And, and I just fell apart and she was very soothing, you know, mother, motherly type of person. And I said, oh my God, I got to raise my three kids by myself. And it was just like this point, like, whoa. And then it seemed like after that, it was like, okay, well, these are the steps. And it just like, I, it kind of fell into place what I needed to do. Did you have a moment of that? Like this I, intuitively? Yeah, I, I definitely did. As you were saying that, like, you know, we're trained to listen and, and to, mm -hmm. you know, we try and be present. But then when we hear a story like that, it's like, oh my gosh, that just is stirring up things in mm -hmm. my head of, of specific memories. And I remember when I was in that last few few months, the last phase of my marriage, mm -hmm. I was working in a company where the my direct boss was very abusive, like would mm -hmm. pound on the wall of my office if he wanted to see me because our offices were Please. next to each other, would yell at everybody on the team. Uh, just not not a good situation. Yeah. And I was questioning, like, why am I continuing in these situations where I am not treated well and I am signing up for those situations? It's a job that I stepped into and I stayed at. It's a, you know, a relationship that wasn't wasn't healthy. And I went into my coworker's office and we we'd become really good, good friends. And I just said, I I can't have home and work not going I need something to be balanced and I think in that same week right around the same time I was talking to my therapist and I just said I said I don't have any healthy relationships in my life I don't have a healthy relationship with my uh, with my wife at the time my relationship at work is not great you know mm -hmm. this, this friend from work is really out of trauma and I can't be a good father because I'm not being who I am so I don't feel like that's a healthy um, role model situation. If I can't be honest and authentic with who I am, how is that good? Mm -hmm. And I was distanced from the rest of my family just because of all the dynamics. And I just had that feeling of like, I am alone and I, and feeling like I'm the problem, like I'm the reason and be beating myself up in that space. Of, mm -hmm. uh, this is, I, I have to keep everybody at bay because I've got to balance all the things at play. And I have my work silo, my home silo, my my family silo for, you know, brothers, sisters, siblings, uh, mm -hmm. space, and none of it can connect because then there's, there's danger there or there's mm -hmm. fear. And I, I very diligently spent the next few years pulling down those barriers and having, working on relationships is very important to me now to make sure yeah. that I keep in touch and stay connected in a very, very, yeah, very relationship oriented way where it's no I want to make sure that our time together in this conversation is us connecting my mm -hmm. phone's off I'll set an alarm I even go as far as I'll set an alarm if I'm meeting with someone and we're going to have coffee I set an alarm for five minutes before I need to go to my next meeting or before I need to leave mm -hmm. so I don't even have to look at the time because every time I look at the clock it pulls me out of our time together right so. right yeah, that's it, it's interesting how we sign up for in situations. Mm -hmm. You know, um, <laughs> there was a I remember and I really laugh about it now, just thinking, what the heck, you know, because there was a boss I worked for that really, um, I don't know, kind of an old fashioned term, but kind of a lech, you know. I mean, he just we always got too close to me, always these things, you know, and I ended up leaving. And then my daughter was going to, uh, my youngest daughter was going to go to Denmark for her junior year in high school. And he asked me back for a bit. And I thought, yeah, okay, I'll get some hours in there to, um, you know, fund this trip for her. I didn't last more than a couple of weeks. And my husband, my my closest friend, she thought, what are you doing? And it's like, just thinking, oh, it'll be okay just for a while. Like, you know, like I can, I can deal with this. And I often think like, what was wrong with me to think that I couldn't find something else or that I couldn't make enough in what I was doing at the time? What, what were you thinking in, like, do you think that you couldn't find another job? Do you, like, what, what was going on with you in regards to keeping both situations that were tumultuous and, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time thinking about that. And sometimes mm. I wonder what was going on in my head. One of the things that 
I, I try not to live in a space with a lot of regret because right, right, all of sure. those experiences got me to where I'm at today. I wouldn't be talking to you, having this conversation, having these great mm -hmm. connections with you and Peggy and the people that have brought us together for this yeah. book. If I didn't have yeah. the story to tell. So I mm -hmm. have to appreciate all of that painful journey that was yep. there Yep. because that's what got me here. When mm -hmm. I look back, sometimes there's been moments where I've looked back and I just, I'm so sad for the guy that I was because he didn't know how great he was. I'm like, I was so mm -hmm. sad that I let people treat me a certain way mm -hmm. that I didn't see it. And I don't know why, why that was, you know, I could find any, I could look back and find anything to blame it on. I'm sure over the years, you know, starting right. with the day I was born to, you know, someone called me something on the playground to whatever, mm -hmm. but you know, all of those things, if I wasn't ready to receive them, wouldn't have had any power. Mm -hmm. So something in my own head allowed me to be in that space. I'm thankful that I got past that, but it, it really has been this thing of, wow, if only I knew how much power I had. I was sitting in, uh, in a workshop and someone said something about, you know, what we're charging for our businesses. And I said, this price, and he says, well, why don't you say this price, which was double. And it was one of those, and this was a few months ago. And it was an instant moment of, wow. I have held myself back by thinking small more than dreaming big would ever hurt me. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I just always had to take the safe route. And, you know, when I was young, people would be like, can we go do this? I'm like, no, my parents will say no. I wouldn't ask. I wouldn't even take the risk to ask. And I would only go for things that were sure things. So when I got into these positions or jobs, I feel like I was letting life happen to me. I was following the course mm -hmm. that was the next logical step. And none of it was because I had this huge desire to go do that thing. Mm -hmm. And I can tie that to my own lack of self identity when I was younger or insecurity around my self identity, because if you don't feel secure in who you are, then you don't have the confidence to say, this is what I want. Right. So wait to see what is the acceptable thing to want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. I like to dissect these things. You know, it's not really about regret, but dissect them because you never know who you're going to be helping and who's listening. Right. You know, that's going to see themselves in us. Mm -hmm. So I like to do that. It's not about regret. You know, I, I know that a lot that's happened to me in my life. I wouldn't wish it on anybody, but I'm grateful for it. You yeah. Know, I, used to, I, I found myself, I, I had a house that, that I, uh, that was a rental house that was our first home. And after we divorced, I kept it for a while. But then mm -hmm. I had to sell it just to get out from under the finances of the divorce. Sure. And I remember I was driving down the road one day. Like I, it's one of those thoughts that you can pick the traffic light in front of you. The Like I know exactly where it was here in town. Yeah. Driving, I had this thought of, I, I, I thought I should have moved in there as soon as I got divorced and done this and done that. And financially things would have been better. I would have just moved in and rented out rooms and all these things. And in an instant I thought, well, Maybe, but then all of these other things wouldn't have happened because I wouldn't have met certain people if I wasn't living in certain places, if I didn't have this piece. And I, in that moment, I remember thinking, I need to stop saying I should have done this and change it to, had I done this, this may have been the outcome. Yeah. But even that, I don't know if that would have been the outcome. And mm -hmm. when we say should, we're assuming that the outcome that we expected would have happened and that doesn't, we don't even know that. So mm -hmm. really by dissecting it, like you're saying, we can, we can go down that road and say, well, yeah, that could have been put us on a different path, mm -hmm. but how many, we were projecting what we think the good things would have been from that path without even thinking about what good things were missing on our current path or what bad yeah. things come up as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So on your path and on your journey now has led you to your own podcast called Own Your Awkward. Yeah. So Tell us a little bit about that before we go on break and um, how people can find you. Perfect. So uh, the Own Your Awkward podcast, it's all over all your favorite streaming services. Just mm -hmm. type in Own Your Awkward or check out my website, awkwardcareer.com. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's there. But I, when I got into speaking and coaching and working with others, I, I got to a point where I thought, you know, I'm tired of talking about myself. I, I've learned a lot of things, but I can only do so much with that. And I want to learn from others and I want to hear other people's stories because I'm still learning on my journey. I, I find that I own my awkward for me. My awkward was not being myself and not feeling good about that. Mm -hmm. However, once you conquer one fear or one thing, 
you know, I was afraid of coming out. Well, now I'm afraid of spiders and snakes. It's like the new thing <laughs> rises to the top. Yeah. Uh, so I have a show on, I have a different guest each episode where I ask them what thing they've had to own mm-hmm. in order to get to where they are today. Because, you know, we see people out there doing it and we see the best of them or we see what we see as successes. And we assume that they don't have struggles or insecurities. Mm-hmm. When we can hear that. That is so empowering to people to say, wow, Martin has this radio show. She's helping people and she has everything must be perfect in her life. And she must not have anything that she has to worry about. And it's like, oh, wait, she she still gets nervous about this thing or she still second guesses that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> she does. Then I could. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that because we all have our fears and securities and I don't care who that person is. Some of the people that have mentored me that are on, you know, much lower, higher levels, you know, one in particular, she's, she's like, she always, before she gets on stage or whatever, she just tells herself, okay, I got me, come on, God, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I, I love that because it, it, and, it, and us, for us to share, for her to share, for anybody to share these things, um, it just gives someone else permission, like you said, that, hey, they can do it too. Exactly. Yeah. All right. We'll be right back, everyone, with uh, more of Andy's podcast and um, what he's doing in the world and just our our whole awkward selves. (laughs) Right. (laughs) See you in a few, everyone. Welcome back, everyone, to Transformation with Martine, where we conquer everything and compromise nothing. My guest today is Andy Vargo, and we've been talking about transformational journey that he took and um, just situation stories. We know that something needs to change, and sometimes we don't trust ourselves to take that move, but eventually we do, which will lead me into my next question for you, Andy. Um, so after your divorce, you, you started for lack of a better word, running your life the way you wanted to. What happened then? Like, how did you start feeling? What did you do? It, it was definitely a journey. I it, I would say, it. I, yeah, I was in a 23-year relationship, so you don't mm-hmm. go from, oh, I'm this person now, to life's great. And right. that's one thing that I think is hard because we see people who make changes in their life and we hear about where they were and we see where they are now, and we don't realize that there is that breakdown in the middle of, you know, like mush and guck and all the stuff we've got mm-hmm. to get. So th- there were times where things were like, oh, wow, this is a cool thing. I'm trying. I'm going to new places. I'm making new friends. I'm reconnecting with old friends. And then there were other days where it's like, why did I flip everything upside down? Was it worth it? I'm out of money. I'm broke. Mm-hmm. I feel like my kids hate me. And I just, you know, I, I feel like I ripped everybody's world apart mm-hmm. and I felt like, was this just a selfish thing of mine? And I'm not even, unf- I'm not even feeling fulfilled. So mm-hmm. why? Uh, so there, there was definitely a journey. And I, I know for myself, I had to pay attention to the growth and really learn how to track, you know what I, today was a rough day, but I had mm-hmm. four of the last days that weren't that bad. And maybe next time I'll make it five or six. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it was, you know what, it's been a really crappy couple of hours, but maybe I can make it for three or four hours before I have another breakdown or whatever. Right. And pretty soon I noticed that I would track the gap in time between when I felt bad and mm-hmm. I would notice that it went from making it a day or two to a week or two. And right. that gave me permission when I had those moments where I didn't feel so great that I could say, you know what, this is going to come and sit here for a little bit, but I'm going to go back to another couple of weeks. Like this is just part of the process. Mm-hmm. So great it, awareness. Yeah. It, it, uh, it, it has been a complete journey, but one thing that I noticed was there were things that, you know, a local restaurant would close and I thought, Oh, I never went to eat there. And I drove by a million times and thought, Oh, I got to go there. Or yeah, it would be a, a park that I'm like, oh, I want to go check that place out sometime. And it's on my way to work and I haven't stopped. And and I started challenging myself to, when I notice the place, stop and do it right away. And be yeah. like, you know, I'm going to do the thing. I'm going to eat at the place. And if I can't do it immediately because I'm on my commute, then I'm going to make sure that I 
I check that out the next time I go out or the, mm -hmm. in the next week, I do that thing. And it really forced me to interject experiences, small things, not even big things, just mm -hmm. little, little things in my day. And also reconnecting with people who I hadn't kept in touch with or didn't have those good relationships with. Right. And there was a point where when I got divorced, I was Uber driving to pay the bills. I was Uber and mm -hmm. Lyft driving. So yeah. I had decided I would write a book about those stories. And I remember at the end, I was going to have a, a party to celebrate. And I invited everybody. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, there are people that know me from work. There are people that know me from my childhood. There are mm -hmm. family, friends. There are people that know me from like my new circle. Like there's some gay guys that are going to be there. And like, yeah. who's going to? Like, how's this going to go down? And I said, I can't worry about it. I can't worry about whether or not right. everyone gets along because they've all seen a different side of me. And I thought, well, what if this person sees me like that? And they always saw me this way. And I thought, well, isn't that the whole thing that was causing you the problems? You know, it's like you get past it, but you have to remind yourself sometimes like, no, that's what was holding you up was having these inhibitions and you have to just be okay. And right. the first time I did that, it was like uh, stressful. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know how this is going to go. Mm -hmm. And you know, after doing it a couple of times for different reasons or different events, it just yeah. became, well, that's their problem. And I'm going to enjoy whoever's there in whatever mm -hmm. way we can. And, and that just has made life so much easier. Yeah. I just popped in my head about how, you know, sometimes a, say an, an event that we do or whatever the case, and uh, we might worry about who doesn't show up and forget about who's actually there. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I have done these things where I will post a schedule for the day. And the, mm -hmm. the last big one I did was uh, February 29th of 2020. Mm -hmm. It was a leap day and it happened to be on a Saturday. So I posted on, on my social media. It's like, here's Andy Vargo's bonus day to live. So from sun up until after sundown, I had, I'm going to go watch the sunrise here. I'm going to go have breakfast there. I'm going to go for a walk yeah. here. And I was like, join me for any or all of it. And there were parts of the day where one person came and there were parts where there were 10 and there were parts where I was alone. Yeah. And I learned to have a great coffee conversation with my friend who was there with me for mm -hmm. breakfast, yeah. have a really reflective walk in the park by myself mm -hmm. and, you know, play cards that night with the friends that showed up to the local watering yeah. hole to do that. And, and each thing had its own things. But if I was worried about, oh, you know, someone said they were going to be here, they're not here. It's like, well, mm -hmm. now I'm not respecting the people that are here or growing that relationship because exactly. they feel like they're the 17 like oh well we're here you know it's like do you see us like we showed up yeah why are we not as important as so and so yeah know? yeah no. yeah that's big that's big so um in this journey um how how were your children how how was that going that was that was the hardest part and still is in mm -hmm. a lot of ways mm -hmm. um, you know my kids were teenagers when when we were going through all this mm -hmm. and it's it's hard because I, I remember my son saying to me at one point, I don't care that you were gay. I just don't know why you would have ever lied about it because uh -huh. they, they've grown up in a different culture, a different age. We raised them differently than than I would have been raised. And mm -hmm. so for them, it's so foreign to think that that's something that someone would have been bothered by or ashamed of or felt like they needed to hide, which mm -hmm. in one way was a very good feeling like, OK, cool. We we raised them right. Yeah. Uh, we raise them not to lie so like mm -hmm. those are good things but you have someone that's your father figure that you look up to is now not who you thought they were and that really was tough because now we're relearning dynamics in, in some ways the the best part of it is being honest with myself I've been able to have the best conversations with my kids since then where I can say mm -hmm. you know this is this is we can get into the meat of stuff and just have really, you know, they're also adults now. So we can yeah. have honest adult conversations and I can say things like, you know, mom and I didn't give you the best example of a relationship. And here's what I've learned since then. And here's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to bring into my life and what is important for those dynamics. But I couldn't have said that when I was still in that relationship for one thing. Mm -hmm. right. I couldn't have said that if I hadn't done the self work for myself. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was tough because I remember the the worst part was probably about a year, year and a half after I came out and was in the middle of the divorce stuff and really feeling mm -hmm. like 
am I even a father anymore? I don't live with my kids. Like all the things that you identify as when you are the head of household, father yeah. figure role. And it's like, oh, I'm not doing that thing. And I would have friends or family who'd invite me over to like, oh, come, you know, we're having family dinner night, you know, because they're reaching out with good intent. I'm yeah. like, oh, I don't want to watch you hang out with your kids and just be thinking, well, I'm not doing that right now. I kind of like to be having dinner with my kids, <laughs> you know, right, like, right. Like their comforting space then almost becomes the, the opposite. And I, I, I got over that and I got through it. I'm not mm-hmm. in that space anymore. Yeah. But, um, but it was very much, uh, how much of this is, is rejection. And, and also the thing that really changed for me was I was able to say, you know, it might not be about a rejection of dad. It might just be that they didn't return the text because they're 18 years old mm-hmm. and busy with friends. Yeah. And when I stopped guessing or deciding what I figured must have been the reasons in every action or lack of action or or intent, it, when I stopped putting my story into it, it got better. And when right. they oh, I, you know, just getting back to you, it's been a couple of days. I'm like, it's fine. I know you're busy. Instead of mm-hmm. saying, well, would you have gotten back to your mom or you right. know, is it because you hate me now or I'm gay or whatever? And yeah. as soon as I could just really not even just not say it, because I wasn't saying those things out loud, but in my head, I would tell myself this story. And mm-hmm. as soon as I could let go of that and just say, you know, I didn't call my parents very much when I was 19 or 20 years old. So right. maybe that's just what it's like. Yeah, <laughs> Welcome absolutely. to the stage of parenthood. Yes, yes. But, but that's what really made the difference because then there wasn't tension when we had those interactions. And mm-hmm. So there's still a lot that's... of growth that happened there because that was a pivotal time in their life. Right. But for, you know, relationships are, they ebb and flow and, and we for can sure. let them, we can let the tide go out and it can seem like, oh, it's, it's way out there. But if I don't walk towards it, then I'm not going to touch the water. So I have to, I have to do the work to keep that relationship important. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm glad that things are, are good and um, getting better all the time. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, even, you know, my, my children too, it was a, there was a point going through the divorce too. I thought, gosh, I don't know if we're ever going to get through this. Like, I don't, I don't know, but now it's like, um, I have a beautiful relationship with all three of my kids. There was one point where I said to my son, I said, I'm so sorry. I ruined your life. And this is kind of in the heat of the worst of it. And he just said, dad, you didn't ruin our lives. You you know, Mm -hmm. this has not been easy. This did not ruin. And, right. and that was one of those moments where I was like, oh gosh, you know, thank you. Like I, yeah, you know, I let that. that weight go. Yes, I, I get it. And, and it's just like, even as, as time goes on too, you know, it's like you, you, you hear things or things are said and it's like, oh, somebody said that I might hear this at some point, And I did. And, oh, thank you, God. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, I, I wasn't, I wasn't sure for a while. So it's, it's really great when you, when you get that reiteration and, you know, especially for your, your children, that's it. That's everything. Yeah, it's, it yeah. is. And, and like you said, you, you, you want to hear it, but there's always that, but will I really hear that? Or is that, are they just trying to give me the happy ending story that, oh, this, this will get there. And I'm like, Hope, mm-hmm. you know, hope is great, but if we don't believe it, if we don't really have the hope, right. it actually almost stings more if it's this, well, it's this idea that there should be hope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but if you don't really feel it, uh, yeah, I get that. Um, so we're going to take a break and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about your business and uh, anything else that you want to share. So thank you everyone for tuning in. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone to Transformation with Martinet, where we overcome everything and compromise nothing. Happy Friday if you're just tuning in. Um, oh, and stay tuned after me is my fabulous colleague, Esther Graham, and she is interviewing Alicia Houston, absolutely fabulous woman. And I know they're going to have an awesome conversation. So tune in. And so Andy and I have been talking about um, our journeys 
um, life and taking steps that you know you need to take that are really scary. But once you do, you know that you're in alignment with what you're supposed to be doing with in your life. So Andy, speak to awkward, awkward career, awkward um, podcast. Like, where did that come from? And what what made you lead with those words? It's, it's, that's a great question because people are all the time, how did you step into that? <laughs> it, it, it's fun. it's a kind of an interesting story because it really is in line with the unfolding of me coming to terms with myself because mm -hmm. when I started writing and sharing things online I was blogging on LinkedIn is how I started getting out there and it was and this is before I was divorced and out by a few mm -hmm. years and all but all of my things that I was posting were very safe it was here's how to have good pictures for your profile here's an idea on how to create a good to-do list and Nothing mm -hmm. personal or anything, but I was working on this book called, uh, that was going to be called The Awkward Interview, and it was mm -hmm. going to talk about all the things that you may encounter in the interview that you don't want to have to talk about, like not having a college degree or having a gap in your resume or getting fired, mm -hmm. and how to tackle those questions. A book that I have written other books, but that one I still haven't finished. Like, it's out there, hey. but it'll happen yeah. But the first Father's Day after I came out, I was very depressed. I had just moved out of the house about a month or two before. Mm -hmm. thinking that You know, life is never going to come together. And what did I do to myself? And my kids hate me and all the things I'm telling myself at that yeah. moment in time. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to go online and buy myself a website. That's going to be my gift to myself today for moving forward. Yeah. I decided to buy the website Awkward Career because... The, the book, I want it to be bigger than just the one book. I'm going to have more things. I'm going to talk about yeah. relationships with your bosses and all stuff. But it was all focused on uh, business and career. So that was just my mindset at the time. I wasn't out at yeah. work, especially just to mm -hmm. close friends and family. So that is what led me into that original thing. And then later when I got into speaking and coaching, that was my website. And I was leading with that. And I kind of backburnered the book for a while because I had moved into the speaking side of but, you know, fast forward a year and I had come out professionally and I started mm -hmm. blogging and sharing about this personal journey. And at one point, one of my friends said to me, he's like, I'm not sure what you're trying to do. Like with some of your videos, because I was doing little YouTube videos. He's like, I can't mm -hmm. tell if you're trying to be serious or funny. I just think you need to kind of learn, lean into the awkward. And that's when I uh -huh. kind of came up with the own your awkward. Yeah. And it just resonated with people so much because we we talk about authenticity, we talk about being true to ourselves, mm -hmm. but the word gets used so much that if if we can just think about you know it's okay to have our quirks, our insecurities, or our awkwardness, like that just is easier to resonate with people on a on a grassroots level. So yeah, yeah, I like that. Uh, yeah, there's there's something comforting <laughs> about it. You mm -hmm. know, I was someone who. Um, I was picked on for about everything you can think of as a young person, you know, so as I've gotten older and just kind of embrace the awkward parts of me, um, uh, it just, it just feels, feels nice. Yeah. And you the know? thing is, like, I, this is my thing and I'm just so, I want the whole world to know it, that like that thing that you feel insecure about when you walk into mm -hmm. a room full of people, yeah, there's every person in the room has something else that they feel insecure about. And yep. there's probably someone in the room across the room that is looking at you going, wow, I love that thing about Martin A. Mm -hmm. And it's the thing that you feel insecure about. And that person probably has the opposite insecurity. If you step in and you feel too young for the room because you don't have enough experience to be at this event, there's mm -hmm. someone else going, I feel outdated. I don't get the technology. I feel too old to be here. Look yep. at that one person who knows all this stuff. And meanwhile, mm -hmm. you're there going, look at all the experience and history they have. I wish, I can't wait till I'm at that level. Yeah. But we don't give ourselves credit for that thing. And mm -hmm. we can embrace it and, and be able to say, you know, I might be the youngest person here and I don't have this stuff, which I look forward to getting someday. Yeah. Where I can step in and help. And this is where my power is. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Or, you know, I might be, you know, um, you know, in a different area where I'm not actually part of the group. But you know what? I see things from a completely different perspective because I'm not in that inner circle. So mm -hmm. not being in that inner circle is what gives me power. Yeah. Outsider. 
Yeah. And, you know, there's so many different phases of our life where we feel a little awkward, whether it's as a young person, a teen. Um, gosh, I don't know, being somebody who's newly divorced, you don't know what to do. You know, I mean, there's so many different places where we feel this sense of out of place or whatever. Um, so this person brought this up like, oh, you know, you should embrace this, like, and, and you liked it. So what was like, what was your next step after that? Like what? Well, it was right around the time where I was, well, one of the two things happened. One was I started putting more quirky thoughts into the videos. Like I would put uh -huh. out like at the end was like, wait, why are you still here? You yeah. Know, little, <laughs> yeah. Little things like that to make it more fun. And then I also, that was right around the time that I was starting my podcast. So I went with that name. Mm -hmm. Own and yeah. started to just do that. But the thing is, I used to, when I got started having videos and stuff, I would really try and rehearse and go, I've got to have everything perfectly down. I've got to have everything just right. But then it got to a point where it's like, wait, that's not, that's not what I'm teaching. So it's like mm -hmm. pretty soon. It's like, you know what? If I fumbled on a word, that's what we're here for. It's yeah. not going to get edited out, you know, unless it's some big technical glitch where it shut down. I got to restart. Yeah. Um, and that made it easier to just be okay that I don't, it doesn't have to be smooth and rehearsed and perfect because life isn't smooth and rehearsed and perfect. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, one of my, um, well, she, she had a, um, a show with this station not that long ago. She decided to go off on her own and, um, and I, and she's like, why don't you just record a bunch and get like, kind of get it done. I said, it's not the same. Mm -hmm. you know there's something about being live like this I don't know how it's going to go I don't know what I I, I don't always know what what I'm going to say what my guest is going to say but that's what makes it it cool yeah. I just always trust higher power you know that um whatever comes out is supposed to be what somebody's supposed to hear whoever needs us today is going to hear what they need it to hear forces you to be present mm -hmm. it does different way yeah, absolutely. So we just have a final minute together today. So um, what would you like to leave the guests with? What you know, wisdom would you like to impart? And then where can everybody find you? again? I would just say, you know, we look at things in the world and we we put the idea that things are perfect in our, into our heads because that's what we compare mm -hmm. ourselves. And just know that that thing that you think isn't so amazing about yourself really is mm -hmm. and that's what draws people to you that's what makes you different so just mm -hmm. know that and be okay saying I don't know I don't I might not feel that great about this I don't know this is usually my thing but this is where I'm going to go forward yeah and you can find me it's Andy Vargo own your awkward and the website's awkwardcareer.com I'm on all the social media I love to connect and, and hear people's stories yeah that's really awesome. All the, the um, I, I appreciate you sharing everything that you have. And um, like, I wish you every success in what you're doing and just in your life overall and your connections with your kids and, and all that. Um, you know, it's, it's quite the journey. I just like we said, kind of in the beginning, I wouldn't trade anything I've gone through, no matter how hard it is, or was, you yeah. know, it's been such a pleasure. Yeah. Hey, Mark, I thank you so much. Oh, absolutely. I know we'll connect again and um, maybe this guy will invite me on his show and, and you oh, we definitely. can, we can do that too. <laughs> I can't wait to put you on the spot. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. Awesome. Um, okay. Well, thank you so much. And um, thank you all of you listeners out here, out there today. I hope that you got what you needed from the show today and that you'll be back next Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific. 1 p.m. Eastern and reach out if either one of us can help you in any way. Thank you. See you next week. Thank you for tuning in to Transformation with Martinet. Real, raw, and vulnerable conversations. Listen or watch live every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com as Martinet and her guests have deep, meaningful conversations, sharing empowering stories. Step into your passions and lead with your heart. If you are ready to accept and love you for you, visit MartineEmmons.com and start allowing transformation to happen today.